Hi folks, welcome to my Apit Retro Journal. Um, today I'm going to be focusing on the Amiga, um, which is a platform that uh, I'm eager to actually uh, own, own one. I, I just put on a, a bid on uh, the UK version of eBay on an Amiga 600, which is a PAL version. I've been wanting to get an Amiga 600 NTSC, but those things are as impossible to find as, as unicorns, I guess. And so I found a nice one on, on the UK site that's in working condition. Um, it's probably going to be very competitive, so I, I won't get it, but uh, at least I'm starting the process. So still, I'm sort of forced to use emulators. Um, what I want to do today, so there's actually a QL emulator that will run on the Amiga called QDOS Classic. And there's actually a version that's been hacked uh, to replace the Kickstart ROM to be able to... And so you basically replace the Kickstart ROM with this ROM that will that's hacked to run the Q, QDOS, uh, which is a QL operating system, and then emulate the QL. Um, and so that's what I'll be doing today. Now, it's interesting because for my April 1st video, it was April 2nd for some of you, I actually did a, a Fool's... Uh, played a prank on people in April Fool's video where I suggested that I, there was a ROM cartridge that you could plug in the back of the QL and it would... Um, it was a hack on the Kickstart ROM and it would actually uh, run Amiga... Uh, work, uh, the Amiga Kickstart and, and Workbench natively on the QL and I, I had a few people sort of convinced until the end and uh, most people liked it. There were a few people that were upset at it and I apologize. I tend not to do those kind of videos often. But uh, so yes, yeah, so I have to stick with emulators. Now actually I'm a big fan of emulators because you can see um, the ZX Simulator is a, a ZX81 ROM emulator that I wrote during the pandemic and I actually did a video uh, a few months back where I ran that in uh, on the on an old QL emulator, QLA, which was running on on the DOS box, which was uh, running in a browser. So it was an emulator, an emulator, an emulator, and a browser. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get to run uh, the ZX Simulator uh, on the QDOS Classic QL emulator on WinUA, the Amiga emulator under Windows. So it's another inception. Uh, and, uh, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to run this, um, on a real computer, uh, when I own one, but for now, um, I wanted to, um, uh, at least give that a try. And it was actually fun. I learned a lot. Um, I had to deal, I, I learned a little bit about, um, there's a, a program on the Amiga called XFS, which lets you read different file, uh, disk types. And so I got that working installed and I'll show you how to do that because it wasn't easy. Um, so I'm learning a bit more about the Amiga, so that's good. I know in the past I've kind of spent a lot of time comparing the Amiga to the QL in terms of operating systems, and I like the QL very much, but I also like the Amiga. And there are lots of things in the Amiga that, that I really have enjoyed working with. And also it's the month of May, and so a bunch of YouTubers are, uh, are celebrating uh, the Amiga uh, with hashtag Amiga. Um, I'll put it in the video. Um, and there's also a website which you can find in the description. Uh, it doesn't give you much information, but uh, basically all you have to do to find other videos is just click on the hashtag Omega and you'll see other YouTubers doing it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do today. Emulation, nested in emulation. I think it's going to be interesting um, and I hope you enjoy it. So let's get to it. So this is the WinUE uh, emulator and this is the, actually this is the latest version. I got I downloaded it um, like sometime late summer of last year and I just checked and it's 4.4. .4. Uh, so, um, yeah, and I actually tried to get the emulator to run on, on this and I was not able to do it. Um, and in fact, um, there is, uh, let me do that. So this is the emulator that I'm, I'm running, um, QDOS Classic for Amiga. There's also QDOS for Amiga, which is an earlier version. In fact, you can see Mark Swift worked on both of these. And, um, so this is a continuation, I think, or it's a derivative. Um, the reason I use this is because I could actually get this to run for UAE because there's actually a, a kick, a QR kick ROM for UAE. Uh, and it says that you don't need to actually have an Amiga ROM to run it, although I have plenty of Amiga ROMs. Um, and so it gives you the kick ROM. And then it also gives you two ADF uh, 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 disks, one that's empty and one that's not. And I use the empty one to upload some of my own software. And I, that work I actually did on, on this machine here. So, um, so I tried to get uh, the uh, UAE version of QDOS running on this. I was unable to do it. What basically happens is this is this will cycle through the, the, the colors that you'll see when I do it on the, an older version, and uh, and then it just gets stuck. So um, 
so I, so I ended up finding a website. Uh, do I still have it? It was um, the uh, source. Uh, uh, let, me, let me do it this way. Uh, SourceForge old um, uh, Win UAE versions. And probably, I think this is the one that's going to come up. Uh, Yeah, you can go back to the original site here. So this is where um, you can find them, all the way from the latest to the earliest. And so I went all the way to um, this version right here, is the one uh, after this, 242526 will not run the um, QDOS Classic, but 023 will. So that's the one I'll be running. So it's, a, you know, this is, we're talking, uh, the, the emulator was actually written around 2002 so it kind of matches up with uh, when this version was written which was uh um where is it right here yeah around 2003 but something diverges after this and i couldn't figure out how to run it so um uh yeah so but one of the first things i had to do is i wanted to i mean i i got it to work uh, uh um and i had to sort of tweak it so the nice thing about the modern Amiga emulator is that it'll just give you this picture and you have to you see very little it certainly has a lot of setup options if you go on on here you can see it just has a ton of these and most of these I don't even know what they are but one thing you don't have to deal with is the filter uh, uh, I mean the display you can just kind of set up and I, I don't you know I think it, by default it was 512 uh, um, I think this was half this number so I just doubled that um, but these filters, you can just kind of leave be. You know, just I've never messed with them. But it turns out on the other one, I had to really work at it. And I, let me let me demonstrate that to you before I, I move on. So if I go to um, uh, actually, uh, I should just do uh, there. Uh, so this is the eight two three, and if I first start this one up, it gives you a different menu, and I have two configurations. If I do the Amiga configuration and load it, and then say okay. So this will load a very similar, uh, um, and I think the as far as I can gather that the uh, the UAE is older than Win UAE, obviously. So this is just an early version of Win UAE. Um, it also seems like the color is slightly different between the older version. So they fixed maybe the the color matching for what the. Um, also, the difference here is notice that uh, this does not pick up the mouse, whereas this does. Interesting, but yeah, so it's running. Uh, it's running actually this, the same uh, operating system. I think it's running at the, well, the speed is the one thing I'm also not able to control. So if I go to um, the options here, you'll see that this, if I reset this, that's what the picture looks like. And I really had to work at getting this to work and having it look good. And so, um, uh, whereas um, the, the modern one just gives it to you as is. Uh, the let me show one other thing which is yeah so let me load the qr configuration uh and so if i look at the cpu i actually have this as uh match 500 speed 6000 but i've also had it at 68 or 40 and and adjustable between cpu and had these in the middle and and just played around with them and it it's it runs the same speed so it's it's just kind of strange but let me boot up the um Oh, let me first show you what I had to do uh, for, for, so for the old emulator uh, under configuration, you have this kickstart ROM and that's all you had to, you, you grab that from this website. Dylan uh, is a QLer that has just created a phenomenal website. It has every, a lot of software uh, free and he only publishes freely available software that has been released by authors. He, there's no pirate stuff on here, but he has a terrific site. I mean, this is the entire emulation site. I'm even mentioned here briefly uh, somewhere. No, actually, I'm not mentioned here. I'm mentioned uh, uh, somewhere here. Is it? Is it here? ZX Simulator. A user, a QO form has created a ZX Simulation for the QA DOS box. I have more than this. I actually have the entire source that runs on the QL, so I should actually give that to him as well. But I was really happy when I saw that. Um, and but if you go to emulators. Uh, you see that all these emulators are out there. There's, they have them for Atari too, but uh, for the QL, they have these two. And so I just downloaded this. And then they also created these, um, if you open these up, uh, uh, these are two ADF files. So one has 
you tell yourself you need and then to actually boot it and then one is a blank disk um so those are the only two things you need and then basically uh you um so the floppy i have that's the adf zero and then i ended up putting adf one on here which i filled with stuff using the modern emulator um i created a, a hard disk as well um which is not showing at the moment but if i uh um oh the, right this is because i don't have the uh, if i go the media emulator uh, I have the, the hard disk as well, similar to, so the interface is different, but it kind of does the same thing. But um, so uh, it, I don't know if it's as robust as 4.4, but yeah, so you need the kickstart ROM, which you can set uh, uh, where you set it, right here uh, under ROM files, you pick it. And then the floppy, uh, and I have, again, mine and the one that comes with it. And then all you have to do is just, uh, and, it, and of course the um, the filter, itself was different, I think, from what it was for the Amiga. But then you just boot it up, and it'll tell you that the checksum is wrong, and then it'll just, yeah, it gives you the, um, all right, I also set the um, the screen size uh, for the display to be more QR friendly. So it's 512 by 256, and I just doubled it to 1020 by 512. I don't know what this would actually look like on the QR. Anyway, it's booting up. And while it is, I can go back to um, uh, this one. So the one thing is, by the way, it, it, so the QR has two resolutions. It has a high resolution. It, uh, uh, it has low resolution with eight colors and high resolution with four colors. It does the um, four color one perfectly, but for some reason it's, it's struggling with some of the uh, uh, eight color ones because you saw what it looks like. It has that weird, uh, um, you know, it's not giving you clear full colors. Uh, although this works, uh, and I assume this is not in high res. This lets you set the, the time, I guess, which I'm not going to do. This is not part of the QL. This is just some program somebody loaded. But uh, so if you do mode eight, you get that. And let me show you what a real QL. So this is a QL emulator, QLA. And if I go um, in here and I type. Uh, mode eight that's what it should look like and so it's not doing a good job in mode eight but if you do mode four which is less colors higher resolution they kind of match up yeah so now it is so so yeah and i don't know if that has to do with the fact that it's the emulator if it does it on a real media i don't know all right before so so yeah so it just kind of shows you that yeah it does a pretty good job <laughs> um but i also know that uh i don't think this is running at amiga 500 speed uh, because uh, when I run my ZX simulator, this runs about four times faster than an actual QL. And I just don't think an Amiga, which has twice the clock speed, uh, well, it has the same clock speed, but because it has a 16-bit versus an 8-bit data bus, it's probably running twice as fast as a QL, that it could actually then run a QL natively, uh, a QL emulator four times as fast. So there's something going on. I guess it would have been better who could have run it on, on the latest Win UAE. But anyway, so I'll leave, I'll close this up so that's not too confusing, but just to show you that, yeah, it's doing a pretty good job here. Um, anyway, this is the uh, QDOS Classic running on, on an old version of Win UAE. Uh, in order to actually get this to work, I had to install XFS. And so um, I kind of followed the instructions and I, I got XFS, which was an LH, LH a file that just had this directory in it, and I just created the info and uh, had it show, and then it has um, all this stuff in there. Uh, it has a guide. The guide just wouldn't read. It gives me this error, but I could read it um, just in Windows, just because of the text file. Uh, but what the installation instructions say to do, and, and this is where this one web page comes in handy, uh, was to, um, I found it here, just had to copy XFSD. Uh, there's a uh, the the guide kind of tells you this as well. So if you go to the guide here, it tells you what to copy. But uh, uh, th this part was confusing. So even though the guide tells you all these things, and if you look at these in text, it tells you to copy um, and then do the. Uh, I don't think I. Yeah, no, I did all three of these. Um, and. Uh, and then once you do that, you all you have to do is do the mount. So that's all. That's what I did. Is I, I actually exposed the. Um, uh, I didn't have the. So when they said copy to the L, I'm like I don't have that. Uh, what I did, I just had to create an info file for it. So I stuck that in here. 
you'll see that devs has both Mount S and FD in here. So you copy those things in, and again, they're in, um, uh, in their respective. So there's an L directory uh, that has, uh, I guess it must have moved then instead of copied. And then there is a devs directory where it had those other two things that I, um, that I moved out of that. Uh, but the, the guide tells you this, so if, if, uh, you know, if you open this up, it'll tell you how to install it. Um, then, uh, yeah, then you open the shell up. Well, first I need to actually add the disk, so let me do that. And the disk is going to be uh, DF, well, and open that. And I think I already have it uh, where it's, it's going to mount both. So. Um, but what, the, what what you get the first time is you're going to get uh, yeah so it's already done that but the way, so what I would get first is I wouldn't get this I would just get df bad and then once I type in that command mount fd zero from devs uh, mount list xfs hit return zero fd zero and, um, and I already copied stuff into that so I created a directory uh, uh, cd uh, wb 1.3 ql that i copied all the files that i wanted to copy in and then copied them over now there is sort of a chicken and the egg problem that uh, i had to deal with which is the ql uh, executables are simple text ascii text files with with one slight variation in that they have a a, a byte or or a word header that tells it how many data, how much data space it needs. So it's a number that needs to be part of that. If if it's not there, and there might be other flags set into the, the first sector when you're reading it in. And so that actually needs to be kept. And when you just drag it file onto a Windows machine, you lose that. And so you need to then basically compress all archives, all executables into an archive and then uncompress it. But of course you also need to have the uncompressed program. So that's a chicken and the egg problem. So what they did on the QL is they have this cool little program. Uh, it's job to base. And what it does, it's a basic program on the QL that allows you to um, emulators. Uh, if I go back here, it's in, uh, I believe it's in, that's in seven. Uh, there's a job to base right there. And it's a, it's a basic program. So Unix uses, I mean, uh, QDOS uses Unix style files. So uh, yeah, so it's just a basic program. And uh, what it does is it, it takes an executable that, so you run this on your QL, it takes an executable and what it does is it converts it and it converts it to another basic program. And that basic program looks something like this. Uh, if I go into my hard disk here uh, under QL, uh, so I created this archive program. Uh, so this is my compression and decompression archiver. And this is actually um, a basic program here. Uh, and this basic program simply has this um, very short little program and then this long data file, which is basically the binary representation of the program and it'll recreate it and then stick in the proper header information so you can regenerate it. I, you can do this for any size, but I did it for an archive program because it's pretty small, it's like 4K in size. And then I compressed my, um, my ZX simulator is actually an archive of that. So I have to first decompress that and then um, uh, first generate the archive executable and then decompress that. And then I can get this to work. So it's a little bit of rigmarole, but uh, you know, us QLs have sort of figured out how to do this. Uh, and so uh, on the QL side now, let me close that. Uh, in this emulator, you'll see that what I have uh, is FLP2 is, is my second disk. So I have my arc bass and then, and then the rest of these are just text files. I also have this uh, toolkit too, which allows me, uh, uh, this is another basic program that'll load this. This gives me a little bit more functionality like jobs. I don't know if I have jobs or not, but um, so let me do that. So I'm gonna uh, load uh, the FLP2 arc bass. So that's just a basic program. And then once it's loaded, I'm going to run it and uh, generate my unarchiver, basically, uh, which is, again, this is a little 4K program. And uh, the disk I.O. here, yeah, so this is here now. I've, I've got my little program. This is the one I showed. And now if I run it, 
it's going to generate the archive uh, program for me. Now, part of the uh, QDOS Classic emulator, it gives you a RAM disk, which there's lots of RAM disk software on the, on the QL. They, they have um, even dynamic RAM disks, which I really like, which means you don't, they don't take up any memory until you put stuff into them. So here I'm going to uh, write into RAM1 arc exe. It's going to go pretty instantly. So my RAM disk is actually the size of a microdrive, 128. Actually, it's half the size, so it's 64K. So it's pretty small. Uh, and so now I can run that uh, executable from my RAM disk, arc exe. And so now I, have, I finally have an executable that I can run. So I wouldn't otherwise have gotten that. This is a German uh, program. So it just tells you it does Huffman encoding. So it does uncompressed Huffman bytes. Uh, and then you can either compress or, or, or uh, that's gross and gross Klein. And then, so I'm going to go gross to uncompress and then begin is the first one. And it wants to know what program I want. Well, and this is the multitasking part of the QL, right? I want, uh, the program I want is um, called ZX Arc. So FOP2, ZX Arc. And you might, as MEGA folks complain, going, wow, that's pretty archaic, but I will say, and then uh, uh, destination device, which is my RAM one. I will say, and then yes, no, all, or quit, and I'm gonna say yes. Um, I will say that also working with the Amiga, at least Workbench 1.3, it, it also has its limitations. Like for instance, I don't like that there's, I haven't figured out a way to do CD dot dot to go up a directory. You always have to type the whole path name. Um, I haven't figured out how to do wild carding yet with copies. Now the QL, the, the base one doesn't have it, but if I run Toolkit 2, it, it, it gives you some of those things. So. So each OS has its idiosyncrasies. Um, again, while this is running, we can take a look at RAM 1 and 51. So it has to get, you can see that it says 51 of 128 sectors. Each sector is 512, half a K basically. So if I keep looking at this, uh, it's almost there. I think it's about, yeah, so it just finished. There it is. So now I can run, uh, so again, if I were to run, uh, if I wanted to run my, so, oops, this is the first one. So this is the floppy FLP1, uh, dir FLP2. If I were to uh, had copied CX on here and tried to run it, what it would have said is, if, so if I do exec FLP2, even though it's an archive version, uh, it would just have sort of said bad parameter. So, but now I can go RAM1 ZX and it runs, there it is, my ZX simulator. Emulator running an emulator running an emulator. So again, as I said, this is gonna run fast. FOP2, and what I wanna do is, do, oops, do, I still have the compression program running. Uh, FOP2. Um, yeah, so I have all these, so I'm gonna run the banner program, right? So underscore banner bass, and uh, this should go pretty quickly and run it, three. And yeah, this, this runs a whole lot faster than, uh, so if I run, I still have my QL running. So if I run these at the same time, let me restart this, run. And if I say three on both and hit return. Yeah, it just finished the top line. So this would suggest it's running four times faster. I don't think that's true, but, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it's kind of cool to see your emulator running on someone else's emulator, right? Uh, it's kind of neat. So um, uh, I can also load my, so this is my still incomplete uh, FOP2 Elite basic program. Uh, so they, they remapped, the, I think it's using UK style keyboards, they remapped uh, the quote to the at two key. So I keep screwing that up. So run. So this definitely runs faster, so I can uh, configure the keys, fire, left, right, up, down. And here's my program, fire. Let's kill a pirate. But again, it's running, I've, I've run this on some, uh, run this on an actual ZX81, it runs slow, but it runs. I run this on a bunch of emulators and uh, boom, boom, boom. There we go, destroyed it, ha <laughs> ha. All right, so that works. Um, what else do we have? We have um, dir FOP2. 
uh, the mind program, I guess we could give it a try. So uh, load um, FOP2 mines QL bass. So, I mean, certainly my program is running well. I mean, this is not really testing out the QL, the QDOS Classic emulator, other than that it's able to run my program. But this is a Minesweeper program, so it's going to take a bit to, uh, but we can sort of poke around while it's doing that. Uh, first of all, I can quit that top program finally. So now I only have two running. Um, FOP2. Um, oh, I have the baton troll. I can run, so I can run that under Q. Uh, I'll run FOP2 baton pass. So this is a program that is going to just, I have the non-basic version, but yeah, so this will say, so this will run and, and generate the baton uh, while it's doing that. Of course, it, um, it, it's going to re-clear the screen once I hit 100% uh, on the emulator, on the, on the CX simulator. Uh, again, obviously the QL does really badly with, with keeping, uh, so it's really lazy. It doesn't try to keep each screen's information intact. So you get these screens overriding each other. They do have screens and windows and I should say windows on the QL, but they just don't do a very good job uh, keeping track of um, the information. So the Mega does a really nice job on that. But um, as you'll see here in a second, uh, now it's drawing the, um, the uh, and you can see any, uh, those patterns you see, it just means that um, I probably haven't scaled the window properly yet because it should be perfect. So here what I'm saying is that, uh, oops, these lines right here that you see, that means I just haven't scaled it properly. See if I can go back into, right, so now I can go down here and hit space. Oh, this is, uh, Oh, and I, <laughs> I hit a mine right away. Oh, that's bad luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm not going to play that again. Quit. So uh, what else do we have? Um, so another cool program. So let me quit the ZX simulator. Uh, so some programmers can run machine code without being executables. And, and this, uh, this one here is one of them. It's called, uh, I think, uh, mode 4, dir FOP1. To. Yeah, so it's the, um, unfortunately, I can't fix this because uh, I don't know how to get the number key on this. I've, tried, I've been trying to find it, and I need the number key to access a channel. So this is a keyboard mapping issue, to access a channel to uh, change the, um, the window stuff, and I haven't been able to figure it out. So I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I haven't figured it out. So, because um, <laughs> I could, what I need to do is change the ink color, I say right, ink uh, seven. Oh no, that fixed it, okay, yeah. But I, uh, luckily, because uh, ink three, but I can't uh, resize the window, because, uh, well, I guess maybe I can't. Window uh, five, twelve, I forget what, uh, uh, 40, 40, 40, 40. Uh, FOP2. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Window uh, 100, 100 at uh, 10, 100. Der FOP2. Yeah. Window uh, 150, 150 at 100. And at 200 comma 10, oh, window. So you have three windows open, you could change that. So let me just see if I can't, uh, there, uh, window singular, 200 comma 10, there FOP one, two. It's a little better. Um, in any case, uh, the last program I wanted to run was, uh, uh, Wow, that's an awful color. Maybe I should make it green. Uh, ink four, I think. Sure, FOP two. Yeah, that's better. So uh, Google demo, right? So if I L run uh, FOP two, Google demo bass. 
Uh, let's, yeah, so this builds, creates its own window. So this was a little demo that basically what it does is it creates, it just draws these circles. And then I use a little machine code routine to basically create an animation by moving the, um, the top part one up and moving the bottom part to the bottom. So it, it sort of has created this, this seamless animation. You'll see that uh, this is always a nice thing to run. Of course, you can see kind of here what's happening because you shouldn't really be seeing these lines, these tearings, but you see it. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I think I'm going to end here. So that's the um, QL Classic emulator running on WinUAE um, uh, on an older version of WinUAE. As I said, I, I tried to get to, to run here and uh, I can show you what happens. Maybe we'll end this way. If I go and uh, do that, and if somebody has an idea of what could be going on. Now, I, I went through this, uh, so I have the QL configuration and load it in. And I went through this in, in as many detail as I could to find out all the different settings you have and try to set these up almost the same to what I had. But if I run this, what will happen is it will do red, blue, and then here's where it's supposed to boot up with the, uh, and it just stays there forever. So, and it has the same kernel, the same ROM and the same disk images as this one, but it just sticks. And up from version 1.5 onwards, if between 0824 to 14, it just actually, I can't even get it run on Windows, so there's something going on there as well. But yeah, so the latest version does this, so I could get it to run. But uh, at least I could get this one to run, and it, it's pretty stable, and it does show it, you know, the, the power of uh, the Amiga and being able to run that, so that's pretty cool. So anyway, I'm gonna end here today. I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, journey into uh, the Amiga being able to run a QL. Um, and uh, it seems to be pretty compatible. I, I haven't, as I said, really run this with um, uh, FOP1, two. I haven't run this with uh, with everything, obviously, because it's a bit of a pain. But uh, also to be able to learn uh, how to use the um, uh, the Amiga better was was a fun part of this uh, in terms of uh, getting uh, getting the XFS to read uh, processing. A lot of this, if you haven't used Amiga like I, I haven't. It was kind of foreign to me in terms of how do you configure the OS. But I, the more I use the Amiga OS, the more I, I like its interface, it's pretty cool. So uh, I will end there. Uh, uh, go watch some of the other um, Amiga videos that are out there and I'll have more coming up. I actually am gonna do one more where I'm gonna compare the QL's uh, operating system again to the Amiga's and my friend Dave from Dr. Dave's Diversion is gonna help me using a real Amiga. Uh, so that's another comparison video that uh, the QL again does something interesting and so I wanted to demo that. I'll do that as well, but I also wanted to showcase the Amiga because it's such a great machine. So. Anyway, thanks for watching me today and I'll see you soon.